Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the A4 H2O which is a collaboration between Lian Lee and Dan Cases. Now don't let this case's small size fool you, it's only 11 litres in size but it's actually one of the smallest cases on the market that will let you fit both a 240mm AIO and a triple slot graphics card and in fact a graphics cards up to 322mm are supported and I'm going to be pushing this today with our Strix 3080. Now in terms of colours, the case comes in two different colours. There's the silver version which I've got here, but there's also a matte black version. And each colour is available in two different versions, both with a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 riser cable. As you'd expect, the Gen 3 riser cable is a little bit cheaper at $129.99, while you're going to pay an extra $35 for the version with the Gen 4 riser cable. So let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the ROG Strix Z690 iGaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 12th Gen i7-12700K. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 240mm AIO from Cooler Master. It's their Master Liquid ML240 mirror. If you do want to go with a different AIO, the important number to remember is 55. That's the maximum height in millimetres of the fans and radiator combined and also the maximum height of the water block on the CPU. So make sure your AIO is compatible. The other big reason I've gone with this particular AIO is the hoses on it are nice and flexible, and I find it worked really well in some of the other small form factor builds that I've done. And if you go with an AIO that has really stiff, rigid hoses, I think you're gonna struggle. For RAM, I've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5, at 5200 megahertz. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive for the build. It's from Sabrent and it's their blistering fast Rocket 4 Plus in two terabyte capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a fully modular Platinum SFX power supply from Seasonic. It's their Focus SPX 750. For the graphics card, I'm gonna be using the ROG Strix RTX 3080. Yes, I do know the GPU box is actually bigger than the case, but I have checked the specs and it should fit with a few millimetres to spare. And in fact, this case has a really cool feature that makes mounting large graphics cards that little bit easier. So we'll see how we get on with it. So we'll go ahead and get started with the build. The case's top panel can simply be pulled off from the top. It's held on with push pins. It's the same thing with the front panel. We'll just pull it off from the front. Each side panel is held on with two thumb screws. We're going to need to remove these before we can remove the panels. Just before I remove the side panels, I want to point out the case's front I.O. So we've got a single USB Type-A connector, a headphone and microphone jack, a single Type-C connector, and a power button. The side panel is held on with push pins, and with the thumb screws removed, it can simply be pulled away. Our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. And you can see here we've got our accessory bag, which is going to contain all the screws and cable ties we're going to need for the build, so I'll go ahead and remove this. At the top of the case, we've got a removable radiator bracket. It's held on with four screws, which we need to remove. With the screws removed, the bracket can simply be lifted off at the top. The bottom of the case is also removable. It's held on with five screws. So you can see with the bottom of the case removed, we're going to have improved access during the building process. Taking a look at the panel we've just removed, you'll see we've got lots of vented areas for improved airflow. We've also got an SSD mount over to this side where you can mount a single 2.5 inch drive and the mounting screws for this are included. At the side of the case we've got our power supply bracket and it will accommodate both SFX and SFXL power supplies. It's held on with four screws. Now that we've got a few of the panels removed, I want to give you a quick orientation of the case. So our AIO is going to go at the top behind this radiator cover. Our motherboard is going to be mounted here, and we've got the end of our riser cable to plug into our PCIe slot. Our power supply is going to be mounted here on its bracket, and the case has a sandwich type layout. Our GPU is going to be mounted on the other side, and we've got the other end of our riser cable here to plug our GPU into. As I've mentioned, the case will support up to triple slot cars and we've got three PCI expansion slot covers. To remove them, we're going to have to turn the case upside down. If you look at the front of the case, you'll notice we've got this really large cutout and it is designed to help you mount your graphics card. So you can actually pass your graphics card into the case through this cutout. 
which one is going to help you avoid scratching your graphics card and two it's going to mean you're going to be able to fit large graphics cards like this Strix card in this case that you couldn't actually fit in from the side. We're now ready to start working on the motherboard and the first thing to do is install our CPU. So I'm going to push this lever down and out, lifting it all the way to the top and then we can open the slot cover. I'm going to insert the CPU into the socket, lining the notches on the CPU with the notches at the bottom of the socket. Importantly, you're going to want to make sure you've got the text in the same orientation as I'm showing you now. Then we can lower the cover down. If we put a little bit of pressure here, the black plastic cover will pop off. And then we can close the lever down all the way to the bottom, locking it in onto this little catch here. We're ready to install the backplate for our CPU cooler. If you look in each corner, we've got two mounting holes. One of the nice things ASUS are doing with their motherboard is they're making them backward compatible with LGA 1200 mounting for your coolers. And this is good because the cooler I have, I don't have the LGA 1700 bracket. So we're still going to be able to mount it using the LGA 1200 holes. So we can line our cooler's bracket up with the holes on the motherboard. Then we've got one of these standoffs to screw onto each corner. To get access to our M.2 SSD slots, we're going to need to remove this heatsink. It's held on with two screws. With the heatsink removed, you can see our motherboard's first M.2 SSD socket. If you've got more than one drive, you'll need to remove this layer to access the second socket, which is down below. If you don't know how to do this, I have done it with this motherboard in another video. That was the Lian Li Q58 build guide, so you can check that out to see how to do it. The other thing is there is some plastic protection from new here and also on the underside of the heatsink that you're going to have to remove if you're using the motherboard from new. So we can insert our M.2 drive into the socket at a slight angle, flatten it down and then we've got a little clip here that we can close over to hold our drive into place. Then it's just a matter of replacing our heatsink. Like I said, remove the plastic protection if you're using it from new. We're now ready to install the RAM, so I'm going to open the clips on both slots. Then I'm going to line the RAM up with the slot. Once I'm happy it's lined up on both sides, I'm just going to apply some firm pressure to the top. It's going to clip into place and the clip will close. Same thing with our second stick, line it up in the slot. Again, once we're happy things are lined up, some firm pressure and it's going to slot into place. If you do want to install a SATA drive in your build, you are going to have to install the add-in card to the motherboard. It simply slots into place and adds four SATA slots as well as some additional headers. You get a full set of your front panel connectors here. Um, we have only got a power button coming from our case. And if you look closely in behind where we would plug the add-in card in, we've actually got a two-pin power connector. So one of the nice things is this are doing with this motherboard, they're giving you the option. If your case only has a power connector like we do, you can plug it in directly to here and there's no need to plug in the add-in card. We can then set our motherboard into the case. We can secure the motherboard into place using the four screws from the accessory bag. Next we can plug the riser cable into our motherboard, so we'll open the clip on the motherboard, remove the plastic protection from the riser cable, and then all we need to do is line our riser cable up with the motherboard. Once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the top of the cable. It's going to clip into place and the clip on the motherboard will close. Next, I want to get some of our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard with the HD audio text facing up the way. Our power switch is going to go in behind the connector for the add-in card. Then we've got our USB Type-C connector, and then our USB 3.0 cable. At this stage, I'm also going to plug in our 8-pin EPS power connector into this header on the top left-hand side of the motherboard. Reason for doing it now is once our AIO is installed here, plugging this cable in is going to be much more difficult, whereas now I can actually come in from the top of the case and plug it in, and it's going to be much easier. And then we're going to want to bring the cable in the main body of the case down to where the power supply is going to go. 
The other cable that I want to plug in is our double fan splitter cable. It's going to go from the two fans on the radiator into the CPU fan header. So I'm going to route the cable through the main body of the case here. Bringing it up to the CPU fan header and get it plugged in. And then we'll tap the cable up and out of the way. We're now ready to start working the I.O. so we can go ahead and set the fans onto the I.O. Cooler Master includes some nice thumb screws to secure the fans to the I.O. If I go ahead and show you this, the only slight problem with using these is the screws are actually fairly prominent at the top. So you can see just how prominent the thumb screw is. And remember at the start I told you the magic number was 55. So if we go ahead and measure, you can see 55 millimeters is really the height of both our radiator and our fan. And we're almost up at 60 millimeters with the thumb screw. So this is gonna to be too long. And I have tried this in the case and this does prevent you seating the IO at the top. So we're gonna to have to use some different radiator screws that fit flush with the fans. Then we can set our radiator bracket onto the IIO and secure it into place using the short radiator screws. So I'm going to lower the pump from our IIO through to the front of the case. And just before we get things lowered into place, I'm going to plug the two fans into the splitter cable coming from our CPU fan header. Then as the lower rail went into place, I'm just going to pull the fan cables over to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck them into the space we have at the end of the case. We can then secure our top bracket into place with the four screws we removed at the start. Then we can add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. And then we can line our pump up with the bracket we fitted earlier on. And then with a thumb screw to put on to each corner. We've got two connectors coming from our pump. One is to power our pump and it goes into our IIO header at the top of the motherboard. The other is a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector and our connector is down at the bottom of the motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and get those plugged in now. This is our power supply. I've already gone ahead and plugged the cables in that we're going to need. So we've got our 24 pin connector. I've plugged in two PCIe cables. One has one 6 plus 2 pin connectors and the other has two 6 plus 2 pin connectors. And our graphics card is going to need three 8 pin connectors, so that's going to be enough. And then we've got a spare slot to plug in our EPS cable, which we've already plugged into our motherboard. So we can slide our power supply into its bracket and then secure it to the bracket with four screws from the accessory bag. Just before we install our power supply in the case, we need to make sure we've got the power switch turned on, which we do. And we need to then plug the extension cable into the power switch. How Lianli recommend you route it is you want to have your tubes from your AIO one either side of the power switch. So I'm going to do that. Okay, that's the tubes one either side, so I'm now just going to go ahead and plug the cable into our power supply. There we go, and then we can lower the power supply into place. Then we can secure things into place with the four screws we removed earlier on. Next thing to do is get our motherboard's 24 pin power connector plugged in. And then we're going to pull the excess cable down to the bottom of the case. Together with our EPS cable. I'm just going to use a cable tie to manage the cables at the top. Importantly to keep our EPS cable out of the fan blades at the top. Then I'm just going to use another cable tie to manage all the cables coming up to the bottom of the case. We can then plug in our EPS cable to our power supply down at the bottom. 
we're now ready to install our graphics card so we can open the slot on our expansion cable. I'm going to slide the GPU into the case and out the cutout at the front. That's going to let me fit it in through here. And then what I want to do is get it worked all the way up to the top. There we go, that's a slit all the way to the back. I just need to flatten the riser cable slightly to allow me to get the GPU to fit. Now I just need to line it up with a slot down beneath. I think what I'm going to do is put the case down on its back to make it a little bit easier. I was trying to keep it upright to give you guys a better view of it. Okay, so that definitely is an easier position for inserting it. The weight of the graphics card helps flatten down the riser cable and that's what was giving me the problem. Um, so now I'm just going to line the card up with the slots at the back and the riser cable. There we go, and that's our graphics card clipped into place. We can then secure the GPU into place. I've also slid our spare expansion slot cover back into place and we'll get it secured. We can then plug in our PCIe cables to the graphics card. And then we can tuck all our case cables and power cables into the bottom of the case. We can then replace our bottom panel and secure it into place with the screws we removed earlier on. Just before we put the panels on, I want to show you just how close we were cutting it with our Strix card. It's completely flush with the front of the case. And obviously, if we hadn't had this cutout and this method of inserting the graphics card, there would be no way it would have fitted. So this is an absolutely brilliant idea. So that's the build complete and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. I've gone ahead and set the PC up and haven't recorded those steps because recently I did make a full step-by-step -step build guide with another ASUS motherboard, exactly the same CPU, exactly the same RAM and exactly the same GPU. And the steps of setting this PC up are going to be exactly the same as that PC. That was my build in the O11 Dynamic Evo, the first one that I did. And you'll find a link to that video in the description if you need to know how to install Windows any drivers and get the RGB software up and running. I didn't want to make this build unnecessarily long by just repeating the steps that I've done previously. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a full case review. I'm going to do some thermal testing and I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the A4 H2O. So hopefully you find the video useful. If you have, make sure you check out the case review. You'll find a link to that in the description. Remember to give the video a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.